everyone. It's Jennifer here, and I thought we would do a fun little exercise based on my Smogfest page for this event. This is my Dragon's Breath um, page, and as you can see, I have a lovely dragon with an Art Nouveau-ish frame, and this is Dragon's Breath Stone, and my goal for today is for us to practice, practice doing different dragon's eyes, just for the fun of it, right? So if you didn't buy this page already, by the way, you can buy it on Etsy. And that was the grayscale version, but this is the line art version if you prefer that. Um, I am also going to offer this practice page uh, as part of a purchase. So stay tuned for that. Um, so let's get started today. My goal for you today is to do something really creative and different. And um, I want you to sort of follow along what I'm doing, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about artistic license. And artistic license is a term that we use in the art world. And what it means is to take something and to make it your own. So if I'm doing something and you want to alter the colors or you want to alter the style or you want to alter the shape of something, feel free. Okay, I want you to make this your own. And you know, every time you put something out there, you post a coloring, it is an expression of yourself. So why not make it your own? I'm going to be altering or adjusting these images a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about, okay? Um, or at least one of them. <laughs> so here is my Dragon's Eye practice page. And what I want you to do is I'm using the grayscale version of the, of the Dragon's Eye. And the reason I did it like this instead of on the page itself is that I wanted to isolate the eye so that we can do a couple different variations. I don't have to take out a new page every time. It just makes it easier. I have blown this eye up a little bit. It's, I think, about 200% maybe 250, something like that. And the reason for that is just so you can see it better here. And it also does make it a little easier for me to get some details in. Now, what that does mean is when you go to do a smaller version of that eye, you might not be able to get as many details in, but this is good practice, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with this top eye. And if you have seen images or perhaps a video, depending on when this one is coming out for you to see, you may have seen that I did a dragon's breath stone. Now, if you saw that video, you'll notice that the colors are really interesting. They're purples and violets and stuff like that. And it's really like an intense looking stone. So I figured, why can't we make an eye to match that stone? So that's my first goal. So this is the dragon's breath. Okay, so this is the dragon's breath stone. And I am going to just go over my colors with you so that you can see what I'm going to do. Okay, and I may lift a couple. I'm using mostly colored pencils, um, Prismacolor, although I just don't know where my Prismacolor white is, so forgive me today. I'm using my um, Caran d'Ache uh, uh, Luminance white. So the first one I'm going to start with is 1035, and that is this neon yellow color. Sorry, I'm just getting this all cleaned up here. And I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see a little bit better. Hopefully that's in the frame enough. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the eye itself. This is obviously the entire eye. Here is an upper eyelid, a lower eyelid. This is the eyeball in here. And when I'm referring to the dragon, because it's an imaginary animal, I'm going to refer to parts that I would if it were a real animal, like a lizard or a reptile of some sort, because that's usually what dragons are based on. But just keep in mind that I am not a biology expert here, but I'm trying to find a way to break this down for you to make it easier. So here we have the pupil, and this would definitely be a pupil no matter what animal it is. However, if we have an entire um, eye that is one color, 
um, not separated like an iris and an eye white, something like that, then, you know, I'm not sure what we name it, but just for sake of my explanation to you today, I've got a pupil here and this will be the colored portion of the eye, whether we call it an iris or what, okay? So I'm going to go around the pupil. And kind of make this portion stand out more. That's my goal for this right here. Okay, and I hope that that makes sense so far. Pretty easy, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Canary Yellow, which is 916. I kind of like to use these two yellows together because the fluorescent neon yellow is a little bit, has a slight greenish cast. And this definitely warms it up a little bit, which I like to do sometimes. However, the other one is brighter, so I like to use a combination of. Okay, so there is my 916. And you'll see I'm going to start blending some other colors in with it. You guys know I'm cuckoo with my neon colors. This is 1038, which is neon pink. Clearly, I, ah, clearly I need to get a new pencil. Okay. I do have this nice little pencil sharpener, which I'm enjoying very much. This is a KUM, um, and it's an automatic long point. What it does is it gives me a nice, really... <laughs> razor sharp point which I don't want it quite that sharp so I will actually draw a little to get it off because I don't want it to look quite like that. Okay, So I just blunted it just a little bit. Okay so now I can go in and get some more of these colors and so I'm going to do actually a combination of the 1038, the neon pink, and the 1036. This is the orange, neon orange. I love using neon colors because I feel like they just add an extra oomph, but the only downside is they are a little bit waxy and they do leave sometimes a little bit of a weird deposit that I'm not keen on. Um, if anybody has a recommendation for neon, a neon brand, a, a brand of pencil that doesn't leave this like little bit, I'm all ears. I, I know that there's, is it Colleen or some, some other brand that does have a neon line. Right now I'm going into my pink. I'm going to kind of blend that out as much as possible and get in here. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create something that kind of looks like the stone itself. It kind of coordinates with the stone. Same effect. So you're going to have like a cool side and a warm side of the eye like you would the stone. It's just kind of a neat effect. Okay. Looking good so far. All right. Now I'm going to go back into my pink and I'm going to just kind of separate out a little area over here where I'm going to add some more detail a little bit later because I can, or you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm making kind of like a backwards E shape over here, capital E, can you see that? Okay, so I'm doing that because I wanna leave some areas for a cooler color in here so it kind of combines. I'm liking the way this looks. Okay, and so this is what I've used so far, right? I think that that's it. All right, I'm going to put these down for a sec. And I'll reach back for those and use them to blend a little as I'm moving along. Um, I'm looking for, I've got a 934, which is lavender. And I'm going to use that. And I'm going to do a little bit of these blues. 904 and 919. I don't know which of these I'm really going to use, so let's just wait. 919, 904. 
So 919 is non-photo blue and uh, 904 is light cerulean. These are not sharp enough. I'm going to use my regular sharpener here. Now it appears I have a lead stuck in the... Aha! Lead. Okay. Um, and I have a variety of sharpeners. I really like my MAPED ones or MAPED, however you say it, but I can't get access to those now. All right, so this is the non-photo. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to make some little spots here, some little areas in between the parts of that E shape. Kind of blend into the other parts here. If that makes any sense. So we're going to have this cooler area and then this warmer area. Okay, and there's not that much more to do before it really starts coming together. So I'm going into my neon pink a little bit again, and I'm covering over some of that blue, kind of blending it a little bit, and you'll get sort of a lavender effect, and then I can use my lavender to kind of make it starker there in that sense. Just a little bit, just a touch for now. So you can see it's kind of developing. <clears throat> I like that. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of I have this uh, 904 here, which is the light cerulean, and I'm going to go in here and try to fuzz this a little bit more, make it a little bit more interesting. And I want to darken this area in here, so I'm going to use a slightly darker Parma Violet, which is 1008. And I'm going to try to darken up this area here just a little so that it has like uh, the look as though there's a shadow coming from this eyelid onto here. So if I can make that. Let's see what else I need to do here. I'm gonna go back into my yellow here and try to get some of this. Here we go. A little bit of the um, chunking from the neon out and warm it up just a little bit more. Okay, and then what I like to do, I'm not really spending that much time on skin with you guys today, we're just doing the eyeballs themselves, but I want to kind of make some of this stuff stand out a little bit, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go over with some of the colors I used and I will like really just try to intensify that color surrounding the eye and it actually darkens and intenses it when it mixes with the line of the line art or grayscale. Now, let's see. If I want to add a little bit of detail, kind of like I'm going to try to find a purpley that I can just use a little bit of. Maybe my violet. Now, the other thing you can do, and you can try this. Do I have pencils? No, I guess I don't have a pencil lead stuck in here. I thought I did. This is my violet, which is 932. I may or may not use this. I might try something else here. Just adding some little details in here. 
just some shapes and things to add some texture for interest. The other thing you can use is a, I'm using a very sharp tip and a very light touch. The other thing you can do is use a um, uh, harder pencil. And get in there like a polychromo or very thin which I'll show you okay now the last color well last two colors I'm going to use here is 920 and then I'm going to use black which is what 935 I think so 920 so I'm going to just um, light this up a little bit over here because what I want to do with this eye is I want to make it look like there's light coming in here which is what this reflection is here and I want that light to look like it's coming out of the bottom and a lot of times you'll see uh, with a translucent object or transparent object a slightly different color or cooler color coming out of the back side of something and that really just kind of sets the whole thing off and makes it really glow. Right? Kind of cool? I think that looks pretty cool. Alright now what we can do is we can either use a blender or a white pencil. I have both. Let's see if I can get some of that. Yes, that does help a little. Cool beans, cool beans. I love it. Get some of this done. I don't like blending everything because I do like to show a little bit of texture a lot of the time. All right, so now I'm going to use a, a black we go black. I am just going to kind of um, sharpen up this pupil. And I think that that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use a little bit of black just to go over this top portion because I want it to look like it's slightly in shadow here. Okay. Makes any sense? Can you see that okay? It's really bright on screen. Mine isn't quite that bright. Okay, so that's basically how I would do this part. Now, if you want to make any of this stuff stand out a little bit, I sometimes will go over a little bit with black or with a harder pencil in a darker color just to make some of these little things stand out. You could take your white and Go around that pupil just a little bit to brighten it up. You could go into this reflective area too and brighten that up. And if you want to, use your black and you can make some of the eyelashes, if you like eyelashes, stand out a bit. Right? Cool beans. All right, so there's number one. That's our dragon's breath eye now, which is a little confusing because it's not a stone, it's an eye. All right, number two, we're gonna do kind of, um, because dragons are often based on lizards, we're gonna do kind of like a gecko inspired. So gecko inspired eye. So number two, gecko inspired eye. So let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 920. Whoops. By the way, 920 was light green. I don't know if I said that. My 920. And I'm going to go over kind of the mid to top portion of the eye using this color. And I'm going to just I'm going to make this kind of an interesting spotty spottier looking. I don't know how else to put it. I, it's not going to have such a, a strong highlight on this one. So I'm I'm trying to get in a little bit of this color everywhere, but it's mostly going to fall like in the middle to upper section of the eye because this is like a warmer green compared to the other colors that I'm going to use. So that was that color. Now, let's see what I have here. Oops. Let's see, I'm 
one, two. I have the true green. I might just use a little bit of it just to try to darken a couple sections. So this is like a little bit more vivid than the light green. That's about it for that. Now, I am going to, whoops, I actually forgot to do something here, but that's okay. Um, what I'm gonna do, this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use that artistic license I was talking about. I'm going to use my black for a second, which I'll note it here. It's 935. I'm going to use my black, and I'm actually going to change the shape of this pupil a little bit. I know it's kind of weird, but I want it to look like a gecko. And a gecko has a really funky looking pupil. It kind of looks like hands of a clock or something. See what I just did? So it's kind of like three diamonds, and this one is a little bit stretched out. So I'm just using that, and I'm going to fill it in with black. I know it's kind of weird, but that's what we're going with. <laughs> all right. So something I should have done is I went all the way up to this pupil, which I shouldn't have done. I should have tried to not do that because I want to make it stand out more. So. Again, I'm going to use this sharpener, which I love because it makes stuff really sharp, but sometimes over sharpens a little bit. But it's great for um, hard pencils. It's really good for hard pencils. So something I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little tool I have. This is my slice tool. I have this posted in my favorite um, uh, supplies. It's in my on my Amazon um, influencer page. If you look in the description below. Not only will you find the coloring pages, but you will find the information I have here for uh, the exact products that I like best. And this is one of my favorites. So it's a ceramic bladed knife. So it's like a, it's like a utility knife, like an exacto knife, except for it's a lot less dangerous for those of us who are clumsy. Um, but what I do like to use it for, in addition to a lot of other things, is if I've made a mistake and I need to scrape off some color so that I don't overload my tooth and it doesn't damage the paper as easily as a regular blade would, especially if you use it on its side. It scrapes. So you can't really see a lot on there right now, but there is a little bit of green coming off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 1035 here. I probably should have done this in the beginning, right? And I'm going to go around that cool looking pupil without blending it into the pupil. If you go into this black, you are going to get mud and you don't want mud. So there's that. Okay, so now I'm going to go into some other colors. I'm going to start using 903, which is true blue. And what I want to do is kind of make this like look like a sort of speckled fantasy eye, which is sort of made up, but at the same time has inspiration from actual geckos, if that makes sense. I don't know if you guys know what geckos look like, but I want to make kind of like a spotty sort of cool looking eye. It's mostly blues, like turquoisey colors, just for sake of fun. So this is my 903. Sorry, my hand is in the way there. I'm going to go on this side now. And I'm not going too heavy too hard because I still need more layers. I have printed mine on cardstock. 
and so that will ensure that I have enough tooth to add all the layers I want. I'm leaving a tiny band here because we're going to, like we did on the top one here, I'm going to add a little bit of glow underneath, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. That looks pretty good so far, I think. All right, now I'm going to add some more to, let's see here. I'm gonna add a little bit of 992. Is there the red stuff in here? Maybe not, okay. 992, which is um, light aqua. I'm gonna go down here and add some of that glow just down here, because this is a really nice, bright, cooler color than what we have up here. So I like it for this purpose. And I'm gonna go over this with some white and then I'll connect it up here and you'll see it'll look really cool. Um, you can use this color to kind of blend into some other colors if you want. It'll kind of help to um, harmonize everything like that and this is one of my favorite colors um and then i'm going to use a little bit of let's see true blue i already used down here hmm. oh i know what i'm looking for i'm looking for my um indigo Hello, Indigo, where are you? Here you are, Indigo. I have an old pencil here. I don't know what happened to the one that came with my newer ones, but Indigo, and what I wanna do is I'm gonna create sort of a little bit in the middle here of what we call a core shadow. If you're familiar with my stone lessons and um, if you have my Secrets of Coloring books, then Secrets of Color. You know secrets of coloring. I always have to do a little promo, right? So in the secrets of coloring books, if you have these, you know how to do the pearls and all this stuff and the different stones, but the pearls have, um, I do specific lessons on core shadows and things like that. So if you want to get some really basic good start, good stuff to start with, then this is a good one. And I also have secrets of coloring too. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in again, go back here. So I'm doing a core right now, which is what my point was, which is the darkest portion of an object, darkest shadow. Oftentimes people put the darkest shadows on the edge of an object when that's not usually the way things work. Usually there's a central portion that's darker than the rest of the object. So when I say center, I'm talking about the center of this eyeball right here. So I'm going a little bit darker in there to really make it pop. And I'm leaving the edges a little bit lighter. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is really get some dark, dark in there. So this is the indigo blue, which I love. Indigo blue is kind of a greenish blue. It's a really rich color. It gives me some really good vibrance. And it's good for shadows too. So if you want to add any shadow color in here, it's great for shadows. In fact, I like using indigo over black a lot of the time because black has some warm warmth to it a lot of the time. And I like my shadows to be cool because usually they recede. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna go back to my um, little bit of my, no, do I want to use that or this? I'm going to use my light green right here. Maybe a little bit. Okay, a little sneaky bit of yellow in here. Just a little bit. I don't want to go too yellow because usually we don't want to go too warm. Um, and I'm going to go over everything a little bit with white and add some spark to it. So down here, I want to lighten this just a little and blend it. So I'm using my... I'm using my um, Karen Dash White. And then if I 
kind of spiral out. You can get these shapes to kind of blend with what's behind them. And I'm going to soften this just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty cool, right? And now if I want to, I can add a little bit of black. If you need more depth still, then you can add a little bit of black. I just, I like to add more shadow than just black to my, my objects. So it looks pretty cool, right? Um, I'm gonna get in here and really deepen the portion surrounding so you can see. That looks good. There we go. Um, and I can go back in with a white or I can use um, um, a marker, all kinds. There's so many different ways I could go so many different approaches I could use to do that stuff, but I'm just gonna use this and I'm gonna make a couple little like white sparkly areas. So I just want it to look like a little magical. That's my goal here, make it look a little magical. Does it look a little magical? I think it does. I don't think it looks like any exact animal. So that's good, right? All right. I think that looks pretty good. If you want to, you can go for further and you can use like a, a gel pen or I don't have a round line where in here, a jelly roll or Pasca. And add a little bit more. And if you want to make that shadow underneath the eye deeper, you can. So let me just show you what I mean. I could go like this and really, really deepen this. But again, this is starting to get a little too warm for me over here because of the black. So I'd probably go back in with indigo blue. And then if you want to do some of your eyelashes, that would probably be a last step for me. Okay. So we have two down, what do you think? Pretty good? All right, now I'm gonna go on to the last one, which I'm gonna do this one, I guess most traditionally, I'm gonna, kind of base this like on a, a reptile eye um, so it'll look more like most natural I guess is what I'm gonna call it reptilian we'll call it inspired okay I'm gonna zoom out just a little I'm a little too far in here okay so we're gonna do this last one like that. So I'm gonna start with my canary yellow. And I'm gonna go over the majority of the eye. And I'm not gonna have this part of the highlight play a big role. I'm going to kind of alter it a bit. So again, with the artistic license, I'm gonna change the shape of this pupil a little bit. And I want this to look more like a typical reptile kind of eye, if that makes sense. 1035 is my neon yellow. I'm gonna use a little neon yellow in here. Maybe a little bit over here get a little glow going. Okay. 
and I guess I'll use it around here too a little bit not too much and I'm going to change the shape of that pupil too as I mentioned so stay with me here I'm going to use black again to change the pupil. So what I want to do is I'm going to extend it this way a little bit and I'm going to shorten it this way a little bit, which is kind of weird to do, but you can if you alter, if you manipulate it enough. So I'm just going to make the darkest parts right here. Like a sliver. Okay. I like that. And I'm going to use um I'll use a little white first around the bottom here. I'm going to put that in my notes in just a sec to shorten it. I don't think I wrote down white for the other ones, did I? White, which I think is 938 if it's Prismacolor. Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I want to add some more visual interest here. So I'm going to add some 920, which is my uh, light green. I'm going to add it to some areas, like down here. And we're going to get some texture on this guy. It's starting to come alive, right? But wait until I get that orange in there. Yeah, orange. I really want to pump this up by getting some neon orange in here. That's you'll see a lot of a combination of green and orange and reptile eyes, especially like alligators and crocodiles. All right, I'm going to go back around this pupil a little bit with white because I really want to make it stand out more. And I'm scrubbing pretty hard here just because I want to get in there and I don't need to do much more to add more color to that little section. But I am going to go next to it to make it stand out more using this orange on both sides. So like that, if you can see that. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I don't know what happened to my um, black, but I have this whole set of Varathins and I like to use my black Varathin, obviously. I don't know what I did with it, so I'm going to use today, I have one that's very similar. It's called a Color Race. It's made by um, Prismacolor as well. It's just an erasable one that's really not erasable. Um, so it's basically a black Prismacolor, but I like to make it pretty sharp. And I'm going to go in with that and I'm going to go in with some browns as well to um, create some texture here. So I've got dark brown, very thin. You could use a polychromo or any other hard pencil. And I've got a dark umber. Okay, so 956, 946. So I've got very thin. You could use polychromo, dark umber, dark brown. you can't see that then black so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create some texture I'm going to try these different ones I don't know which one I'm using so uh, what I want to do is I want to try to create sort of like a pattern I want to follow like the eyeball so I'm having it go this way first and then I'll kind of swoop let's see I need to make it consistent So I'm making kind of like little X's. Okay. 
I'm going to go right over this highlight. I know that might seem kind of weird, but I'm going to get some consistent texture this way. Not sure if I like the way it looks or not. So I'm going to go back over some of it to make some of it stand out more too. So I've kind of just created little X's throughout here. And I did not mean to go all the way to the bottom there. So that's a boo-boo. I don't know if I can pull that off with my slice tool or not. It might be. I can go over it with white. Huh, I got some of it off. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go on this side too and do the same. I'm curving my lines a little bit to go with the eyeball, I guess. <clears throat> okay, I want to get some dark, darker darks in some of these areas though. And I'm going over some of these lines a second time to kind of darken them. If that makes any sense. And I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I want to go over this. I want to change this highlight a little so it looks a little different than the other one. So I'm using some of my orange and I'm going to basically redevelop this highlight over here. Orange and canary. And I'm going to go back over this with my, this was, sorry, I used dark umber for this. This, um, this one is what I chose. Okay, I like that. Um, I want to create like a darker glow coming from this whole thing. So how am I going to do this? I am going to look for like an olive and green. Let's do like an olive green. Yeah, like olive green. Yay, 911. Nine eleven. Olive green. I'm going to zoom out just a little so you guys can see. My notes. <clears throat> so I'm using olive green. I want to just go over some of my texture and cover it up and get some other um, color in there that helps to create the the whole overall feel and the roundness of the object. So a darker color. So that olive green helps with that. Get in here too. I'm going to go over it with a little black too because I feel like it's a little, still a little too bright. So the goal is to get that texture in there and then to kind of let it blend into your background by kind of going over some of it so it becomes part of the setting. If that makes sense. I don't know if that does. Hopefully I'm making sense to you guys. I would really like to get some of that bright green in here though. I feel like I need some more hints of bright green. Hang on. Probably not with all the way to the edges here. black. Okay, now if I want to get some of that shadow in there, I can try using a white pencil, but it might go south. I'm sorry, not shadow, highlight, highlight. So I can use, if I need to, I can use um, a paint marker, pasta. Let's try that. I'll try that in a minute. I just want to use my yellow and blend this out over here. went over that little spot that I accidentally covered up. 
trying to get that to match the rest. And I think I've gotten it now. Just taking a little bit of manipulating. And I can go over some of these textural elements and darken them, bring them back, make them you know stand out more, or I can try to get them to blend in more. It really depends on what your goal is. Some more darker orangey red. I'm going to use a little bit of poppy red. This is going to seem kind of weird, but if I just use a touch, which is 922, 922, if I just use a little touch in a couple spots, it's going to help round out that eye a little bit. And then I'm going to go over with my um my Pasca in just a sec, just trying to get some more of that green and that bright green in here. There we go. Okay, I think I like that. Okay, um, and I'm going to go over the black one more time to make like the eyelashes and everything stand out a bit. You can see that okay. Okay, I'm gonna go over this black one more time. Now if I wanted to, I could make, you know, the skin, whatever, this all part of the same thing. This is my olive green. Just kind of gliding over this area here. Black, little black, and get some eyelashes going. Again, this is like a last step, so let's wait because I want to get that Pasca in there. So I have a Pasca marker here. I have this in my um, influencer shop if you want to buy the same one. Uh, I'm just going to try to clean this off if the card makes any type of towel on it. started so I am gonna just kind of dot this so it doesn't get too crazy but I want to create like a highlight here so it kind of goes more it's a slightly different highlight than the ones that you see above on the other eyes and technically it would run across that pupil too so I like to use a little q-tip to blend that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go up to that highlight with some darker color. You could add a couple tiny little bits of like little flecks in here of white just to kind of pick up Looks kind of cool like that, I think. I like that. Maybe some wetness in here, detecting a little bit of tear. In the eye, in the uh, inner corner of the eye. All right, so now, so I can go up to these areas and I can darken them so that I make that highlight more stark, make it stand out a little bit more. see that better now. So if you want to refine any of these little shapes, you just go around them and the Pasco will pop right off. All right, what else do I need to do to this? Maybe a little more orange or a little more poppy. I feel like I could use it in a couple places down here. Kind of 
making little circles around the white areas in the middle of the X's here. So it kind of makes them pop a little bit there. That helps. I'm going to do that a little bit over here too. Hmm, that looks pretty cool. All right, one last thing. I think I want to just brighten up this green here. And I can make it brighter by surrounding it with uh, close to near opposite color. So I just did there. Okay. I think it looks good. All right, guys. I'm gonna mess around with, oh. I didn't ever use this this black um, ferrothin, did I? So you could make things stand out more if you want. Add some wispier eyelashes in there if you really want. Oops, I just broke my pencil. Okay. I think I like it. All right. So there we are. Three different dragon eyes for you. I hope that you enjoyed this, found it educational. Again, if you don't have this page, it's in my Modern Coloring Etsy shop. And it is now attached to the other files. So if you already purchased my dragon page, this one and you want the practice page then on my Facebook artist page send me a text with your order number and I will send you a message with a code on how to get it okay it's on my it'll be on my website all right guys thank you so much and I hope you enjoy the rest of Smogust and take care